get it one page now here today we're going to do the color calibration of this service pro x display so with the service pro x i had a lot of issues trying to install the color calibration software for my x right i1 display or even my spider 3 pro as well and uh, if it did install it just wouldn't run correctly or there was color differences there that just didn't make it run correctly there so and then probably a lot of other reviewers are having the same problem with this uh and since the a lot of applications for our color calibration software aren't actually ARM um, built yet. So thinking about a little bit outside of the box, what I've got here on the bottom right hand side is a Service Pro 7. Now I will do a review on this Service Pro 7 later on. I'll put a link in the description below when that's available so you can actually check that out if you want to. But what I've got actually set up here is I've actually managed to get the Service Pro X as a wireless monitor to the Service Pro 7. So I currently, you will see it running in extended mode there. It is actually coming across. Now it's a little bit laggy because it is running through Wi-Fi, but that's all right. If even it's a little laggy, it's still able to run the software. And I'm able to save the pro color profile and I'll actually be able to share that color profile as well too. So let's start doing the tests on this. And I will actually have the Service Pro 7 connected up to my hardware calibration device here, which is the XY i1 display, and we'll start calibrating the monitor and also do the testers for it as well. So let's get on with it. So let's measure the lumens or the brightness of the display of the Service Pro X. So what we need to take note of is this measurement called current. It is measured in candela per square meter. Now, one candela per square meter equals one nit of brightness, which you'll be more familiar with. So currently, there are 10 increments to the brightness of the screen. So I'll set it down to zero. At its lowest setting, it's currently sitting at 4.4 .4 candela per square meter, which is four nit of brightness. So increment number one is 10.4 nit of brightness. Increment number two, is 20.4 nit increment number three is 35 nit increment number four is 57 nit increment number five is 85 nit increment number six is 123 nit now that's interesting because this is where you want to be at for video and photography. So currently it is sitting at increment number six. Now increment number seven is 168 nit. Increment number eight is 224 nit. Increment number nine is 291 nit. Increment number 10 is 370 it. Now that's very interesting because on the Microsoft website it states it's around about 450 nit. So I actually did some testing here and I've, when I actually go bring up the actual the menu itself I can see it's actually even more brighter from the screen itself. So I would say that if we go and move this back to the other way. So I'm just going to unzoom back out so we have the two screens back going again over here. And I'm going to move this over here, back to the other screen there. Oh, it looks like I can't really do anything, so I've got to stop the measurement. Come on, let me stop the measurement. Oh yeah, different mouses. I'm move this back on this side here. I'm going to minimize this one here, so there's two funky mouses, it's really funky. And I'm going to have to open up Notepad. And in Notepad, that is as wide it can go. Notepad, at its brightest setting, I've set it at its maximum brightest setting there. And I've actually got a reading of 447. 647, yep, 47 candela per square meter, which is 447 nit of brightness. So that's very close to its stated from Microsoft website at 450.
I don't know why there's a difference between the notepad brightness and the testing software brightness. It could be because of the wireless monitor setup that could have made it a little bit funky, but pretty much I did the tests again using notepad as the white point reference and I found out that 123 nit of brightness results was actually at increment number five. Now this is ideally where you should be at when you're actually doing photos and videos editing. So just make sure it is set at increment number five. Now I still wanted to actually show you the challenges I had for this display that hence why I've kept the first part as intact as it is. Now when I actually did the color calibration I also made sure I had the screen display brightness set at number five. Testing the color gamut coverage of the display we have 91.9 coverage of sRGB and 63.3 coverage of Adobe RGB for the Surface Pro X display. I have color calibrated the display of the Surface Pro X using my X-Rite i1 display tool and I will share that color profile with you in the link in the description below so you may use it but if you're serious about colors I do suggest you purchase your own hardware calibrating tool it will be a lifesaver there but if you don't at least this gives you a good starting point just for photos and display so it's been color calibrated now and I'm just going to do the before and after to show you what it looks like with the calibration of this display so this is before this is high key tone and after I can definitely see it's gone a little bit brighter it's not as gray as well too so a little bit less darker and gray for high key tone let's go before and I'll just go mid tones here and this is before calibration after calibration it's only got a little bit more grayer that's about it but not too much that I can see low key tone again before and after not too much change there in that one there I'll go to Scion, so that's before and after, again not too much change there, go to Magenta, this is after, before, oh there is actually a bit of change there, so before and after, before and after, I can definitely see it's gone a little bit more less magenta on that, so more pinkish and dark, less darker as well too so for sure it looks a lot nicer after for sure there for magenta and I'm just going to go to yellow so this is before and after oh there's actually a bit of a change there before and after I can definitely see the orange comes up a little bit nicer there for sure more vibrant than before and the reds so this is before and after not too much change in redness and green before and after oh definitely I see a little bit of difference there before and after it's only a very slight adjustment of the green I would probably say it's gone a little bit more darker only by a little sh shade smaller and for blues before and after I don't see too much change with blue and olive before and after it's gone more darker for olive only by a little bit there and brown before and after not too much change in the brown so go to the RGB one here so this is before and after not too much change there now I have put a more in-depth review of the Surface Pro X. If you want to check that out, I'll put a link in the description below when that's available to you. So you can see the screen is quite bright and you're not going to struggle too much in broad daylight. So definitely a nice screen there. And as for the color wise, they're not bad from factory as well too for this display. So if you find this video informative or enjoyed it, give it a like. And if you haven't done already, subscribe to my channel by hitting that subscribe button on the bottom right hand screen. I do try to upload a new video every Tuesday. And just remember, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. I'll see you next video.